seriously I feel like everybody should take up knitting or crochet particularly if you are neurodivergent if you have autism if you have ADHD anything like that or if you're just anxious and a bit of a fidget take up knitting and crochet because you have a fidget toy or a stim that you can do all the time and when you're done with it it spews out clothes is that not magic <laughs> that's magic to me still So hello you wonderful human of the internet and welcome to a very much requested video about yarn twiddling and some of the many things that I have recently knitted and crocheted that I would like to show you and that I tend to show off on my Instagram but not so much over here. So I'd like to talk about some knitted cosplay items. I would also like to talk about this demented crochet hat which I love so freaking much, um, and this spiky shrug, and this crazy shawl, and basically we will talk about things until we run out of time to talk about things. So I guess I'd better start with my own background in knitting and crochet and how long I've been doing both things, because I do think it's amazing in today's era with YouTube tutorials particularly just how quickly you can get going with these things on your own and how quickly you can get good at them that people see some of the more bizarre stuff I make and they do assume okay there's no there's no way I could do that like you must have been taught by your gran you must have been doing this since you were a kid I, I can't just start on my own and do this and I feel like me and crochet is a very good example that actually that's not true these days. You can start on your own, you can get good on your own. Because crochet I only picked up about two years ago and actually I slacked off for about a year of that time. So I've only been crocheting really for a year. Um, and just like with knitting, I do like to overface myself. I do like to throw myself at the really difficult stuff first. I would much rather be frustrated than bored basically. But crochet, I had tried to learn to crochet for, wait for it, a decade, a decade of trying to learn to crochet from books and I was, I couldn't, I, I, I could barely even make a starting chain and then go back on it. Like I, I couldn't make anything with crochet after a decade <laughs> and people kept telling me when I would say this they kept saying look but you're so good at knitting and crochet is easier why can't you do this like I don't understand it's so simple but it wasn't for me it just wasn't until I tried a YouTube tutorial I looked up a YouTube tutorial I will link the one I started with below if I can find it it was a starburst granny square for beginners tutorial and it gave you a lot of different stitches most of it was very well explained very slowly done and the thing that I found the most difficult then was just just getting the movement right and pulling the loops through and at first I was doing the beginner thing where you know you you take the the loop with your finger and you pull it over the hook because you can't get it to slide through easily but I was actually it was making sense to me so I immediately went from crocheting granny squares into crocheting duster cardigans like this one um this was the the first proper pattern I actually did uh, with crochet I went from granny squares to a duster cardigan like say I like to overface myself um, when people say particularly with knitting people say oh start with a scarf start with a scarf <sighs> don't start with a scarf in my opinion you will be so bored you really will you will be bored I would say start with something like a hat and then if you can cope with a hat or just just start with like a little swatch just get going with a swatch try different stitches on a swatch the first thing I really knitted that I really loved knitting was a sock there was a sock tutorial this was before um video tutorials because I have been knitting for a lot longer I've been knitting for about a decade when I was learning there weren't video tutorials so I first got into it with this sock tutorial that was just photographs of everything but it was brilliant and I got so into it there were so many different stitches you have to learn to make the heel kind of curve around you have to decrease at the toe you have to knit it all together at the toe so it's like an invisible seam there was so much shit going on that I found fascinating and um, after that I was hooked and I wanted to keep over facing myself but it's gotten to the point with knitting now whereby I basically know most of the stitches that are out there I wouldn't say all because people are always inventing new stuff I don't think you can ever know all the stitches really but um 
I know most of them and I don't really get over faced with knitting anymore. I don't get that. Oh, I don't get this. And I, don't, I want to and I don't understand it feeling that I love so much. I love that feeling, as weird as that sounds. Whereas crochet, because I am a complete newbie at crochet still, like after a year, yeah, I can do, you know, pretty simple things. But crochet, I feel like there's no ceiling on crochet. Um, some of the things that people come up with with crochet are just amazing. I will link a couple of accounts below who make incredible, incredible crochet stuff and have some cool patterns out that you can do. Um, and yes, the, the crazy hat was one of these things. So let's talk about the crazy hat a little bit just to get going because I feel like it's the craziest thing. So let's just start with it. The crazy hat, I crocheted this really recently. I've literally just finished it. Um, I have it over here somewhere. So um, here is my crazy hat in close up. You can see that in close up, the yarn is not particularly nice. Um, I am, this was really a prototype hat. This is number one. I'm planning to make a second one as soon as some really pretty yarn arrives because I didn't have any fading yarn that was the right thickness. So I had to just use different yarns mingled together. So it's got this kind of spotty look to it. But the little mushrooms and everything are just so cute and the little ruffles like a toadstool and the, the wiggly wiggliness of the hat tip, it's just so beautiful. Now this hat is actually meant to have even more detail on it. It is meant to have spots all over it, kind of like those little dots over here. Um, it was meant to have dots all over it and I did actually make all the dots. I sewed them on and I didn't like it. It was overkill for me. I like the fact that when you look at this, you basically just see a battered old wizard's hat with some shrooms growing on it. That was what I liked. But with the dots on it in these colours that I'd chosen, it was just too much. It was too in your face. It was too kind of crazy fairy tale. And I, I liked the wizardy vibe that it has at the moment. So I cut all the dots off. Um, after all that, after sewing, after crocheting them, pinning them in position, like fiddling with the positioning and sewing them all on, I, I just, I, I took them all off again. It was kind of ridiculous. But yeah, so this, this hat, um, I had never made anything of the sort before. When it came to crocheting that, I had never, I didn't know how to decrease stitches, I didn't know how to increase stitches, and these are really basic things. Like if you're going to do any shaping of an item, you need to know how to increase, i.e. make the thing bigger, decrease, make the thing smaller. I didn't know how to do any of that when I started on something as crazy as that. That hat was kind of a really good example of how much I like to overface myself. I saw it and I thought this is the craziest thing I've ever seen with crochet that I actually want to own. Because there's people make a lot of stuffed toys and stuff with crochet that look amazing, but I'm not really a stuffed toy maker. I like wearables, basically. I like anything I can wear, I like. So the hat, it looked way too difficult for me. It was the craziest thing I'd seen. It looked impossible and I thought, I'm going to give it a go. And if I can do this, it will prove to me that I'm actually finally a crochet, finally, after one year of really trying, I'm actually in the proper crochet leagues. I can actually crochet. Once I can do this, I will feel like the sky's the limit. And I've had patterns with knitting that I felt exactly the same about that I eyed up for so long and eventually I tried them and I completed them and I felt like, oh my God, I'm a proper knitter now. Um, so the hat was that for me with crochet and I can't wait until my new yarns arrive in mid-February and then I will be doing the hat again. But in the meantime <laughs> with crochet, I have found a pattern called the Krampus hat. I will put up a picture from the Krampus hat. It's on Ravelry. I will leave all the pattern details of these things below so you can go find them if you're a knitter or a crochet or you want to be. Um, I found the Krampus hat which has horns on it. So I have crocheted both of them actually but I'm still embellishing the second one so I won't show you it just yet. But this is basically what the horns look like. They're going to be here, there's going to be little ears, there's going to be a kind of frothy hood. But the horns were the bit that really drew me because the thing I enjoyed most about making that hat was shaping the wibbly wibbly tip. I loved the shaping. That was what was 
and making it dent so it kind of stands up on its own that was so fun to me um so the horns i loved making these horns and i'm really intrigued to try other patterns that have horns in them because i want to know how to make a curly kind of ram's horn and i have seen patterns that make that so i'm probably just gonna make the horns on that pattern and then maybe try and sew it onto one of my knitted hats or something like that just to have some horny hats but this is such a beautiful horn and if you see it up close there's actually two colors in there i don't know if the camera's going to pick it up but there's baby pink and there is some kind of lavender in there too because you go round it afterwards doing little slip stitches of another color so you can actually have two colors much more vividly in your horn if you want to you could have like a black horn with white detailing on it if you wanted so you'd really see the curves in it but um i just i love right now making these shaped rigid pieces of crochet they're just so fun to me so while we are talking about crochet i thought i would just break your screen even more with my <laughs> duster cardigan that you you saw me wearing with the hat because I feel like the kind of crazy mushroom sprouting out of your head hippie vibe just goes so freaking well with this summery beautiful duster so here it is in its entirety looking like a bit of a peacock uh, I feel like a peacock <laughs> in this thing like a pastel peacock it's got the most beautiful kind of mandala on the back the name of the pattern is the lotus mandala duster um, this is the second one I made because it although it was the first pattern I ever really attempted with crochet i did it in purple first and i love the pattern so much that i wanted to do a pastel one for summer so i got this cotton king's yarn um in all these kind of ice creamy colors it's it's a big a big eccentric piece of clothing and i adore it but yeah i do recommend this pattern if you are fairly new to crochet although that is a crazy thing to say like oh just go ahead and make a, a whole like massive floor length cardigan yes it's a big project so if you're still like i'd like to just make some small things that are going to be quick i don't want to commit to a big project it's just going to end up gathering dust in the corner if you feel like that okay maybe don't go for it whereas i was so into crochet at the time that i just i'd finally nailed it after a decade i was so into it that i was ready to attack a long project um and actually it's, it's not that long of a project it does grow very quickly this is the beautiful thing about crochet over knitting if you're making something wholly like this that you know it's full of holes obviously it grows much more quickly than something knitted that is you know dense and solid but yeah it's actually a really quite nice easy pattern but it's not boring like the lotus kind of mandala on the back has so many different stitches and patterns in it that it's not boring at all particularly if you do it in a color fading yarn like this so that it's always changing color and it's really 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 pretty and it's it's so satisfying watching it grow so while we're on the subject of breaking your screen uh i think we will skip from crochet over to knitting and talk about this shawl a little bit so here is this shawl in all its glory floating around the bathroom i don't wear this shawl very often because i'm not really a shawl person but it just was such a beautiful looking pattern with so many different stitches in it that I was so fascinated I had to try it. It's by um, West Knits or Stephen West. He does these amazing interesting design pieces and I've got another one of his pieces that I want to show you in a bit but um, he does a mystery knit along I think every year and this was one of them so people start this thing and they don't know what they're going to knit they get four different clues throughout the month of October so he gives you a YouTube video which shows you all the different techniques you're going to need because he does use a lot of very weird interesting techniques in his patterns um just to show you some of them you've got like this this weird kind of eye cord cast on over here you've got the short rows down here you've got this kind of interesting slip stitch x bit here you've got more eye cords these bits are just little boingy eye cords <laughs> like the whole thing is just wild you've got little bubbles down here um and some little kind of color work and some brioche over here he loves his brioche and then you've got this interesting kind of x dropped stitch kind of thing and then the sideways striping the sideways candy striping the whole thing is just one 
wild journey of crazy new stitches. So he makes a YouTube video for each part of the pattern so you're not left to your own devices with any of it even though you don't know what you're knitting because it's a mystery knit along. I think he told people it was a shawl but you didn't know anything else. I unfortunately was too late for that. I only really discovered Stephen West through this year's uh, mystery knit along. So I'd already seen people rocking their fully d fully done shawls by the time I cottoned on to the fact that this is amazing, what is this? I want to try it. Um, but I love the fact that I've seen it now in so many people's colour palettes because obviously not everyone has gone for Larry crazy colours. This is one of the beautiful things about knitting and crocheting. Like seriously, I feel like everybody should take up knitting or crochet, particularly if you are neurodivergent, if you have autism, if you have ADHD, anything like that, or if you're just anxious and a bit of a fidget take up knitting and crochet because you have a fidget toy or a stim that you can do all the time and when you're done with it it spews out clothes. Is that not magic? <laughs> That's magic to me still. So everyone should absolutely take up knitting or crochet and like I say it's getting easier and easier to do that on your own. Now YouTube tutorials exist and I am going to be making a hat knitting tutorial very soon. I keep meaning to get on with it. I am going to get on with it. It is going to happen um, and hopefully that will get a few of you knitting because although people have asked me for crochet tutorials I'm still very new myself with crochet and I'm there are some stitches that I'm still not sure I'm doing right <laughs> and um because crochet is a lot more um a lot more improvisational than knitting like knitting you're basically doing it right or you're not doing it at all uh crochet you can really kind of just kind of you know just random some bits and it can come out looking fine is what I'm discovering but yeah so I'm I'm basically more fluent in knitting than I am in crochet so I when it comes to tutorials I will start with my knitting where I feel safe and solid and I know what I'm talking about but uh anyway yeah this shawl obviously not everyone did it in a crazy Larry color palette a lot of people did it in very toned back kind of neutral earthy toned ones and actually I got part way through this crazy thing and I did find myself thinking oh my god I wish I'd gone for earth tones but when it was done I was completely in love with it it's <laughs> I mean now my hair matches particularly it really really goes with me and I love it and it's been such such a pretty kind of chair cover on my ancient disintegrating chair I've loved it so uh, yeah West Knits I really really re recommend finding him on Ravelry and on Instagram because he has some really unique fascinating patterns and what I'm hoping and what I need to look up is I'm hoping that he has made or one day he will make maybe a sweater that is all this bit like this bit with the colour work and the short rows as a sweater, like a fitted, curvy, like, you know, the lines accentuating the kind of musculature of your body. I feel like this could make just such a sexy sweater that would be so fun to knit. And I'm praying he's already made it or that he will make it soon. Maybe I need to send him a message <laughs> and just be like, I love, look, I love this bit particularly, but it's at the back of your neck when you wear it as a shawl, so you can't really see it. This admittedly, when I wear it, I will sometimes wear it backwards with just a cloak pin in the back, so it's kind of like a capelet, and then you can see that bit, that bit <laughs> at the front. So, uh, yeah. West Knits absolutely adore his stuff. I've got a new knitting needle coming so I can do the cowl version of this which is one of the hats I would like to talk about. We're, we're just going to jump randomly I think from pattern to pattern at this point. So this is also a West Knits item. The yarn is gorgeous. This is a hobby crafts yarn. Hobby with two eyes. You've probably seen their adverts on Instagram. If you're anything like me and you knit their adverts seem to be everywhere. This was a Halloween yarn they did that fades through black to purple to green to dark green and I bought about three balls of it because it just looked gorgeous and I'm so glad I did. But anyway, this is the Excuse Me hat by Stephen West also. It's got this kind of interesting shaping over here where the rows kind of dance into each other. But other than that, it's basically just a plain beanie. Um, but it's the first time I'd ever done brioche knitting. I came up with my own method of brioche knitting a few years back but what you ended up making came out very 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 solid and very dense because 
um, you were using both strands of yarn at once and it was completely reversible and it, it yeah it looked beautiful but it was rigid and it didn't make a good hat whereas Stephen West's version of brioche knitting which I imagine is how most people brioche it probably it's not something I know much about yet but it, it comes out this really soft stretchy warm fabric because this this hat you're using two colors of yarn so it's kind of reversible on the other side with my other ball of yarn it was just black glittery yarn I used so this way around it's a lot more subtle it's mostly the black glittery yarn and it's just got little pop throughs of color which is pretty cute I like both sides of it but I love I love this beanie kind of I can't yet find a particularly flattering way to wear this design because with the excuse me design it has this edge that is longer over here and I can't it doesn't seem to matter how I wear it, it just looks kind of weird. So although it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautifully coloured hat and it was a really fun design to make and I was planning to make another one, I haven't been wearing it enough to justify making another one, which is why I've bought a needle to make the cowl version of this because he's got like a, a cowl, which is the same brioche knitting, the same kind of a skews pattern um, so it kind of comes down to about here and then it flows up here and you can pull it up your neck and be cozy around your nose and I use that kind of thing all the time so I'm thinking the cowl is going to be more used to me than probably another beanie would be also I, I make a lot of hats I love making hats like if, if you've never tried circular knitting on a circular needle because you can also do it on double pointed needles so you're kind of going round from needle to needle with all of that you have to keep stopping and starting whereas with a circular needle it flows it's infinite and I love it I just love Ah, I love it. It's so satisfying. So I make a lot of hats. So moving on to some of the other hats I've knitted. This is another absolute favourite hat pattern of my... I mean, my God, isn't that fucking gorgeous? <laughs> I love this hat pattern so much. I've made it about four or five times now. It's just so beautiful, particularly if you use a colour phasing yarn as your kind of pop colour. So this hat, not only is it gorgeous, but it's really easy and so cleverly made that what you're doing is you start with a provisional cast on which if you don't know it's basically where you crochet you don't have to be good at crochet just look it up it's very easy I could do this even before I learned to crochet um, you crochet a load of stitches onto a needle and then you knit into those once you're done with the piece you take the crochet yarn out so you have these live stitches that you can pick up and then you can just knit in the opposite direction or you can bind it off with completely seamless seaming so a provisional cast on it's a really clever thing to learn how to do so you start with this provisional cast on and then you actually knit the thing sideways so these um bits of color work it's very very tidy on the inside all you've got are the bits of yarn that you've carried at the bottom but there's no more carrying of yarn anywhere else on the inside it's nearly as tidy as it is on the outside um it's really amazing because you're knitting it sideways and so the colour work bits, all it is, is it's German short rows. And I'd never done German short rows before. It's a very clever technique where you're not wrapping the stitch per se. You're just doing this weird twiddle with the stitch that kind of doubles it over and holds it there very tightly. And you don't get any kind of gaping. You don't get any weird stuff that you sometimes get with short rows. It's all very tight and very neat. Um... And how they managed to work out the shaping to make this perfectly shaped beanie knitted sideways with these colour work chunks in it. How they worked out the stitches and the sizing and the... I don't know, it's magic. It's absolutely magic. So you knit it sideways and when you reach the end you take out your provisional cast on and you do Kitchener stitch which also you can look up on YouTube. I always have to look it up because I can never remember but it's very simple and you just end up with a completely seamless seam. I can't even find where my seam is and I'm not very good at Kitchener stitch. I never get my tension right. Uh, yeah literally I, I can't find the seam. You end up with a seamless hat knitted sideways. It's genius and yeah as I say if you use a colour phasing yarn how satisfying is that? Oh my god. So moving on to one more hat 
but this is in cosplay territory. This is a very plain hat by comparison to the ones I've just shown you but I adore this hat because it's a cosplay hat. So if you have seen the bit in Twilight where Bella is in the tent and she's got her hat on and she's very very cold in the tent in the storm, this is the hat basically that she was wearing and there is a pattern on Ravelry for the hat. The only challenge is trying to find the yarn, the exact kind of right looking yarn because the hat that Bella wears is like I'm a complete Twihard by the way if you didn't know total twihard. Um, the hat that Bella's wearing, and I'm also a bit of a perfectionist for details like this when it comes to cosplay items, I get really like I will zoom in on the picture and I get really finicky about it. Um, so the hat she's wearing, it's this very tweedy yarn with these little speckles in and I managed to find some tweedy yarn that I'm actually really happy with. It came out pretty much exactly how I wanted it to come out. Uh, I will try to remember and look in my phone. I think in my phone I've got a picture of what the yarns were that I used. If I can find that and I can find the details I will leave it below in case you're interested. But this hat, I wear this hat pretty much all the time in the house. Uh, I look crazy wearing a hat indoors in weather that's not even that cold but I just love the feeling of this hat. It's tighter than most of my beanies and it has this this lovely like pressure on my head. It's just a really comforting hat. So I wear this hat a hell of a lot. I really really adore it. Um, the other Twilight cosplay piece that I have made recently are the classic Bella's mittens um, which she does wear in the first movie. It's the scene where she comes out of the house in the ice and slips over. She's wearing these chunky mittens with this interesting kind of dragony pattern on. This pattern was also on Ravelry but I adapted it quite a bit um, because I did some googling and I found that back when Twilight was a big thing there had been someone who was selling Twilight replica mittens like this. So I really had a good look at theirs because I was like well okay if they were selling them they must have been good right they must have done their research on what it was supposed to be and this was back in the day when the film was new maybe they knew more than I know I don't know and it looked as though they had some detailing on the palm of their mitten it wasn't just plain stocking stitch. So I ended up doing this god what's it called like moss stitch I ended up doing moss stitch on the thumb and on the palm and then kind of doing some, I don't know if you can see, some kind of interesting edging around there just to make it look a little bit prettier. Um, so that was how I did mine. The other benefit of having moss stitch instead of stocking stitch on the palms is that you've just got some grip. So if you do decide to ever drive, I wouldn't recommend driving in mittens honestly unless the weather is so cold that you're losing your fingers. <laughs> um, but if you ever need to do anything where you need grip, like moss stitch is very very bumpy, it's very rough, you're going to have a bit better grip. But I do love these mittens, they're really cute, they're really kind of loose and baggy because she kind of wears them over the top of her jacket sleeves, so that's kind of the way you have them, they're these, these massive massive chunky gloves. So while we're on the subject of Twilight and knitting I just have to recommend literally the one and only book of knitting I've ever bought myself which is Vampire Knits. It's got a bunch of patterns inspired by Twilight and True Blood. Uh, it came out you know in what the kind of mid to late 2000s when vampires were all the rage and it's got a lot of really cool patterns in. It does have its own version of the mittens in it although I would say the one on Ravelry knitted in the round is a better pattern but I do love the palm readers um, pattern in here. It's got a really just useful versatile pattern for um, little fingerless gloves inspired by the ones worn by Alice in New Moon. But the thing I wanted to show you that I knitted from this ages ago and I have actually shown you this before because many years ago the second video I ever made on my channel was about goth knitting actually. <laughs> so uh, it's been a very 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 long time but I made another one of these. This is one of the patterns in the book and it basically gives you <laughs> a tote bag, a red velvet lined tote bag that you can put any swirly script on that you like. They give you this whole swirly alphabet for stitching in um, pretty swirly script. 
and then doing some interesting kind of swirls underneath it. Obviously the traditional one that people do, sorry there is a lot of dust flying around now, <laughs> the traditional one that people do is the be safe thing, that is the one that they do in the book is that you know Edward's little note to Bella is be safe. Um, I did it with got blood because I wanted a kind of vampire-y clubbing bag. This or the previous one, this is actually the second one I knitted after my first one got tatty. This used to come everywhere with me in about the year 2011. I had my blood vial necklace, I had my got blood tote, my fangs in. I was really in vampire mode whenever I went clubbing in about 2011-2012. Um, so I have very very many fond memories with this pretty bag. So anyway moving on to the final knitted piece that I want to talk about. I have talked for ages so let's try and make this one quick. I just wanted to talk about this lovely spiky crazy looking shrug it's got dragon stitch it was the first time I've ever done dragon stitch which is this spiky thing over here but it also has these crazy sleeves that have all this kind of holy stuff spikes down the sides bits that you can slip through your fingers it's a really cool pattern however the pattern on Ravelry I will give you the details below but the pattern on Ravelry is horribly written however my notes are up on Ravelry now um, my my pictures with this are up on Ravelry with my notes so if you want to knit it my notes are there and hopefully it will explainify the pattern to you I have also been knitting this pattern again in pastels now that my hair is more colourful and we're coming up to summer I wanted to do this pattern again and I haven't finished it this is half of it you do half at a time and then they say to cast off and sew it together I think that's a bad idea and an unnecessary idea so I just leave it on the needle and then kitchen a stitch it together that's what I did with this one and I feel like it just flows better in the back than if you had a seam running down it so this is my second one or half of it and I think it's going to be cute when it's done. The only thing you need to really kind of watch yourself with with this pattern is that you need to get acrylic yarn and ideally quite thick acrylic yarn like still in the Aran slash Worsted category that which obviously they tell you all of this in the pattern but um, quite thick Aran is good. This this Aran is a lot thicker than this one was and you can see how stiff these spikes are and how pronounced these spikes are whereas these spikes are good but like not as big and not as pronounced as these ones so you need kind of tough acrylic yarn basically if you're gonna I have tried doing it with softer yarn and it just it wasn't working it was just not working um the other thing about the pattern is there's no sizing it says one size fits all oh honey it does not um this this is it on me and I had to put in corset lacing around the arms this was kind of an idea I came up with at the last minute when I couldn't do it up I couldn't seam it and get my arm in so I just corset laced it instead to give myself a bit more room so you can do that but there are quite easy ways to size up the arms and make it bigger which I have included in my notes on Ravelry so if you do need to size it up which I would say the vast majority of people are going to need to size it up the sizing is tiny um if you need to size it up I've kind of explained quite an easy way to do that uh so anyway I have talked for freaking ages I guess it's time to shut up I have a huge stack of crazy looking knitting sitting next to me that I've been thrusting enthusiastically into your face but anyway hopefully that has maybe given you some interesting things to knit or crochet and if you do neither of these things then maybe I can get you to go and look up some beginner tutorials on YouTube. Like say I am going to be making a hat tutorial aimed at total total like never picked up knitting needles before beginners but for now there, there are plenty of tutorials out there. Like say I will try to find and link the crochet tutorial that I started with. I have never had this fail me no matter how complex or weird the stitch someone is out there and they will explain it to you. It's fantastic. It's like having a thousand grandmothers all ready and waiting at your behest even at four o'clock in the morning. It's the world we're living in is, is fantastic when it comes to learning new skills. So uh, anyway with all of that said I hope you enjoy your fidget toy that spews out items that you can wear or cuddly toys or whatever it is that you enjoy making and if there are patterns that you think I would enjoy the hell out of then um, please link them below 
below or give me details below particularly if they're on Ravelry or something like that and they're easily acquirable that would be great oh gosh actually there are other patterns coming to mind now that I should have showed you that I love but I guess there's always time for another one because I am always knitting or crocheting or both I I can't relax or watch TV without fidgeting with yarn so I'm always doing something so I will be back with more at some point so uh, anyway if you've tolerated me this long well done um <laughs> sorry for breaking your screen with my colors thank you for listening over and out bye bye <laughs>